Greetings. The Griot Theater Collective is honored to celebrate the contributions of our ancestors and pioneers who paved the way for us by telling their stories, our stories, through performance and theater. We would like to give attention to their creativity told from our roots to the present. On Theater Thursdays during the month of February, Black History Month, Griot Theater will highlight these gifts to our people and the universe, starting with a historical Black theater overview. Then we will experience the awe-inspiring Harlem Renaissance. From there, we will enjoy some of our favorite sensational Black musicals. And finally, we will re-familiarize ourselves with a look at some of our phenomenal and talented Black artists. We are proud to share our rich African-American history through our theater eyes. We must never forget that artistry is in our souls. We were created and born to tell our stories through theater. Poetry is not what Shakespeare begot. Nor is it one with Tennyson. Its psychedelic beats have little in common with Shelley and Keats. It has its own diameter. Not iambic pentameter. It has upon it... No rule of sonnet. No straight-laced corset. Nothing to force it. It shrieks. It streaks. It melts. It melts. It sings. It swings. It cries. It laughs. In verses or in paragraphs. It grooves. It moves. It's canny. Giovanni. It's a brand new school, both, both hot, hot and cool, cool. A, a blues beat, bittersweet, it's deep, deep blue, bright red, high yellow, it's loud, it's proud, it's a wilder strum, a super drum, sets up its own condition, defies tradition, it shocks, it rocks, it mocks, it knocks, it's humor, drama, it talks about your mama, it's love, it's dissension, it's a brand new dimension, it's, it's many, many, many tracks, so, so come. come. Sit down with me and spiel and spat and so rap and spree beneath this looming, blooming, black, 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 black poetry. <laughs> In the uh, the early 40s, say before World War II, we had community theaters where black folks, you know, in Harlem and various other places, produced their own community entertainment. And that's basically what we had. Because if we went downtown, there was nothing in the motion pictures that we wanted to see. And on stage, there was very little, except that every five years, green pastures would pop up or something like that. There was no constant fare. You looked at Broadway, you looked at the shows that came out of Broadway, and there were so seldom, if ever, well, there was, of course, but very few shows that had anything to do with black life, and certainly fewer that used black actors. For a while, immediately after the war, in the flush of brotherhood, there was things that happened. Anna LaCasta was one, Deeper the Roots was one, Jeb was one, on Whitman Avenue was one and various other things were done. Um, uh, Richard Wright's uh, native son, you know, for a while things got a little black. Then, uh, when the 50s came and the Cold War started and, uh, you know, people started taking sna uh, snips at Paul Robeson and at Langston Hughes and other things like that, then black su suddenly became not as popular once again. The black theater at that time, and this was in the 50s and then to the McCarthy era, the black theater was a theater of protest, basically. The theater has for black people been a way of protesting the circumstances within which we attempt to exist in this country. Then the civil rights furor started up, and uh, toward the end of the 50s, along came a young lady named Lorraine Hansberry. She had a play called Raisin in the Sun. So you fine without a chance? It took you three years, but you finally got it said. 
Won't you just give up and leave me alone? It's Mama's money. He was my father, too. Well, so what? He was mine, too, and Travis's grandfather. But the insurance money belongs to Mama. Your picking on me isn't going to make her give it to you to invest in any liquor stores. And I, for one, say God bless Mama for that. See that? You hear what she say to me? Honey, you hear what she say to me? Go to work. Nobody in this house is ever going to understand me. Because you're a nut. Who's a nut? You, you're a nut. He's mad, boy. The world's most backward bunch of women, and that's a fact. Well, then there are all those men who would leave us out of the wilderness and to the swamp. Honey, why you always got to be picking on your brother? Can't you be a little sweeter sometimes? I need some money for coffee. I felt a lot. But I never felt anything as the first black director on Broadway. It was not something that was not anything that somehow was a part of what we did or how we did it. It was something that people remarked about later. I'm glad to hear that uh, this is what Lloyd feels mm -hmm. about it. Uh, mm -hmm. It grows out of a thought of mine that as I study history, that virtually all of us are what our circumstances allow us to be. Mm -hmm. And that it really doesn't matter whether you're talking about the oppressed or the oppressor. The most ordinary human being has within him elements of profundity, uh, of profound uh, anguish, that there is, you don't have to go to the kings and queens of the earth. I think the Greeks and the Elizabethans did this because it was a, a logical concept, but every human being is an enormous conflict about something, even if it's how you get to work in the morning mm -hmm. and all of that so that I thought that it would be very interesting in the contemporary American uh, theatrical moment mm -hmm. to explore the most ordinary man say on the south side of Chicago mm -hmm. who we mm -hmm. think we know mm -hmm. you know he drives you to work and you say well he's a nice fellow mm -hmm. to see what he's like at home and some of the ordinary events by the time he gets to work he's a complicated and large person